Hello everyone, this is Colm once again. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. I'm making this video uh, because I had wanted to make this video a few months ago. Uh, I noticed that there was a video here on YouTube entitled, What are the Core Beliefs of Swedenborgianism? And it was uploaded by a YouTube user named Daily Christian Life. Uh, and it's about a, a 2 minute 34 second video. Uh, and it was uploaded back in July, July 1st of this year. And uh, I noticed it because uh, if you look up Swedenborg or Swedenborgianism, there's not a lot on YouTube. Uh, and actually, besides some of the videos of mine that I've tagged, the only other video uh, series that you're going to see with any sort of consistency is Curtis Childs and his channel Off the Left Eye. And for those of you who missed it, I actually had Curtis Childs on my live show, uh, the, the most recent episode of my live show, Dreaming in Symbols. He was actually my special guest. So I'll put that link to that video in the, in the more info section of this video. I encourage you to watch that. Uh, it was a lot of fun having Curtis on the show, and I hope to have him back on in the near future. Uh, but needless to say, there's not a lot. You'll find some funky old videos about Swedenborg, uh, and so there's not a lot going on on YouTube. Of course, that is changing now that Curtis is doing a lot more videos, and uh, he's really inspiring me to do more videos about Swedenborg. Um, this video, however, is interesting because I always like to think that you're doing something right when people come out of the woodwork and decide to do a, a, a refutation video. I absolutely love refutation videos because even if I disagree with the content of the, re of the refutation video, I can sometimes appreciate a refutation video or a rebuttal or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I also find them humorous when they are so poorly done <laughs> and uh, and done in a way that just makes you realize that the people who did the video probably don't know very much about the topic in which they are trying to refute or they do just a very, very simplistic job of just sort of vaguely mentioning what they're opposing and then as you'll see in this video... Uh, you know, just quote quoting some random passages from their scripture of choice, in this case the Bible, in this case really specifically the New Testament, of course there are some verses from Exodus that are mentioned. Um, maybe one verse, we'll, we'll see. But anyway, I want to go through this video, and so because I'm not tech savvy, you're not going to be able to see the video, but I'm going to turn up my volume here on my end, and I'm going to play the video. Uh, I haven't done this in a while, and I really do hope that in the future I'll become more tech savvy so that I can do that fancy thing where you'll be able to see what I'm seeing, and I'm sure it's a really simple thing, but even though I'm... I don't know, am I, am I a millennial? Whatever. Anyway, I guess I still have a lot to learn about technology. But anyway, I'm going to put the link in this video, uh, for this video, in the description section of my video. So if you're interested in, in, in watching it, um, I'll pause it and kind of repeat what the person says. So let's, uh, let's have a whirl, shall we? The following is a presentation of Got Questions Ministries. What is Swedenborgianism? What is it? The New Church and the Church of New Jerusalem are alternate names for Swedenborgianism. This group, which has been around since the late 1700s, is well outside of Orthodox Christianity in its beliefs and can definitely be labeled as a cult. Oh, we're 45 seconds in. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so well outside of Orthodox Christianity. I would love to know what that means. And I know in my in my past videos, especially when I was a Muslim apologist, I, I would pull this out. I, I would trot this out and go, what, what do people mean when they say Islam? And, and I get it. I realize this, this is a very postmodern uh, approach to studying religion. You know, but I, I do genuinely think in this context, this is important to ask this question. Um, I have a feeling, I'm, gonna take, I'm just going to take a shot here. Take a shot. Maybe I'm wrong. That the Christian group that has done this video, produced this video, this little quick 2 minute 34 second video, is probably a non-denominational evangelical fundamentalist group just gonna take a stab and say that, 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 that that's the case. Um, maybe they're just a conservative branch of a mainline Protestant church. But I'm, I would be very curious to know what they mean by Orthodox, because do they mean Trinitarians? And any Trinitarian? Do they mean the tripersonal view of the Trinity? 
um, where they say that Unitarians are not Orthodox. Uh, what about Catholics or, or Eastern Orthodox? Just, just, just curious. Um, and then in terms of Swedenborgianism being a cult, um, I don't know if I would call it that. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. Defin full definition of a cult is formal religious veneration, worship. A system of religious beliefs and ritual, also its body of adherence, okay? A religion regarded as unorthodox or spurious. Ah, okay. So there's different meanings to the word cult. I mean, I, I would say most religions fall in the definition of the first two for cult. But the third one, though, a religion based as un regarded as unorthodox. Okay, well, I guess then they're, 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 uh, they're okay with uh, calling uh, Swedenborgianism a cult. Uh, usually cults have a very negative connotation, uh, but I just wanted to, you know, play with some words here. Let's continue. Swedenborgianism bases its teachings on the writings of Emanuel Swedenborg, who was born in Stockholm, Sweden in 1688. His training was in science, but sometime around 1750, he had a vision in which he believed God came to him and declared him to be God's personal messenger of new revelation. Further encounters with God and places in the spiritual realm he traveled to were the basis for his many writings. These writings include teachings such as... Okay, so before we dive in the teachings, so far so good. Um, one thing I want to back up, though, even with the historical presentation um, that was at the very beginning of the video, that regarded Swedenborgianism as a group, a group, singular. Um, there are groups. <laughs> There's more than one branch of the Swedenborgian church here in the United States. There's actually three. Um, I'm a member of the oldest one. Uh, called the General, uh, well, it's General Church of the New Jerusalem. It's Swedenborgian Church of North America is actually uh, the more proper, uh, well-known uh, name of the of the um, branch of the denomination. Uh, there's also the General Church, uh, and then there's the Lord's New Church, which is the smallest of the three. Um, and within, the, you know, each there, there's a reason why these branches exist. Maybe I'll do a future video on the history of, of, of the denomination for those of you who might be interested. But for now, it should be noted that it's not just a group. There are groups, and certainly within my branch, the uh, the approach to who Swedenborg was, the interpretation of his thirty volumes, <laughs> no joke, thirty volumes of writings. Um, is very diverse, and uh, there's really no standard dogma or doctrine that is forced onto adherence. Uh, in my branch, people gain uh, glean inspiration, spiritual inspiration from Swedenborg and his in his ideas. Uh, but I just feel like pointing that out because this video is presenting Swedenborgianism as, from what I can tell, just a one a one group thing. Um, in terms of the biography. Very, very straightforward, uh, and there are a number of really good biographies out there. Uh, one that is recommended uh, pretty regularly um, by my branch of the uh, denomination is this book here. It's a very short uh, biography, Swedenborg, An Introduction to His Life and Ideas by Gary Lockman. Lockman's not a Swedenborgian. He is a, um, I, I guess, a popularist of the history of West, Western esoteric thought. Um, and so it's a very, very straightforward biography. Uh, so I would recommend this to anybody who actually wants to learn more about Swedenborg. Um, a classic Swedenborgian or Swedenborg biography is, uh, is the Swedenborg Epic. Uh, and also another biography called Swedenborg, um, a vi the, I think it's the Visionary Savant, I think. Um, I think that's what it's called, but it's by the, um, the, the biographer Benz, B-E-N-Z, uh, which is way more academic than, than Lockman's. Lockman's is a good introduction, though. So within the 54-second mark of this video, so far, yes, the biography is true. He was a scientist. Um, he was all around polymath who was uh, infused in studying and was well-regarded and well-renowned uh, in Europe. Uh, especially in his native Stockholm, uh, as being a diplomat, a, a, a lawmaker, a, uh, 
um, you know, he was part of the, I think the House of Commons in Stockholm, uh, scientist, uh, just anything you can think of. He was like a Leonardo da Vinci. And then, yes, he claimed to have uh, spiritual experiences where he was uh, speaking to the divine and was experiencing uh, other wor realms, uh, which were labeled heaven and hell. Uh, and yes, though those real spiritual experiences do inform, in, in a large part, uh, his writings. Uh, however, um, as I'll come to in a moment, those are not the sum total of his writings. But we'll continue. God has many names. Ah, okay, so now we're going through the theological ideas. So, you know, teaching such as God has many names. Depending on the beliefs or religion of the individual. The Holy Spirit is not God. Oh, the Holy Spirit's not God. This is how I know this person has not read Swedenborg. Continuing. Trinity does not exist. Trinity does not exist. Jesus Christ's death did not atone for our sin. Did not. <laughs> Salvation comes by practicing what you believe, whatever religion that might be. The afterlife is spiritual, but dependent on how well you lived in your physical body. Mm -hmm. None of these teachings are compatible with biblical Christianity. None of these views are compatible with biblical Christianity. So, uh, a few falsities here. He says the train doesn't exist. Wrong. Uh, the Holy Spirit is not God. Wrong. Um, he, so... Let's let's start with the two of those because the other things are actually true. Um, Swedenborg was a was had a very high Christology. His favorite gospel was the Gospel of John, and he does interpret the verse in the Gospel of John, uh, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes into the Father except through me," um, as not meaning an exclusive statement. So yes, uh, the afterlife is rather pluralistic. Um, it is filled with folks who are from all backgrounds. Everyone goes to some destination, depending on your understanding of the divine. But the most important thing is, in Swedenborg's view, is uh, how you lived your life. Uh, you know, did you live a selfless life based on the teachings of your spiritual understanding, or did you live a very selfish, negative life, uh, usually ignoring spiritual principles or uh, distorting them? Uh, based on how you lived your life, you, you basically, I like to use the phrase, you book your ticket to the, to, to your destination after death. Uh, so yes, this is a metaphysical truth claim. People can be free to, uh, reject it at will. Uh, so yes, I would say that that is correct based on what the video said at, at the minute, uh, 20 mark. But let's go with the things that are false. The false of these are the Trinity doesn't exist and the Holy Spirit isn't God. Now, granted, a true statement is if you're going to look at Swedenborgianism through the lens of Protestant literalist, you know, literal fundamentalist view of theology, then of course, <laughs> Swedenborgianism is going to be like at the, at the opposite spectrum, uh, opposite end of the spectrum in which this sort of fundamentalist literalistic view is resting. Uh, which I gather that's the perspective of, of, of the producer and, and speaker of the video. Um, to illustrate the fact that uh, the, tr the Trinity does exist, but uh, Swedenborg does, is, is not a tripersonal Trinitarian. Uh, so uh, Swedenborgians are not tripersonal in their view of the Trinity, which I know, according to Trinitarians, is heresy. So let's just be upfront about that. Heresy! Um, but... To, we, it, it, unlike Unitarianism, uh, the belief is that God is one being and one person, and the Trinity are three aspects of the divinity. So God the Father is the unknowable deity beyond all comprehension. The Son is the, is the mental picture that you can get of the divine. Uh, and yes, Swedenborg uh, metaphysically did believe in the virgin birth and the incarnation. And that the Holy Spirit is the divine's activity or uh, presence, uh, re you know, radiating into the into the physical realm. Uh, and and to prove that point, and to prove my point that I don't think this person has actually read Swedenborg, I will quote from the uh, True Christian Religion, um, Volume One, and I'll go to the chapter called the Holy Spirit, uh, which is Chapter Three, and Number. Let's see here. Number 138. And by the way, uh, the, the cool thing about Swedenborg's writings is no matter what translation or edition you have, all the numbers are always the same. So you can literally just look up what I just referenced. 
So the chapter is about the Holy Spirit, and it says, All those of the clerical order who have cherished any right idea of the Lord our Savior, when they enter the spiritual world, which generally takes place on the third day after death, receive instruction at first about the divine trinity, the divine, the tr divine trinity that doesn't exist, mm -hmm. and particularly about the Holy Spirit, that it is not a God by itself, but that the divine operation proceeding from the one and omnipresent God is what is meant in the word by the Holy Spirit. So that it, so the Holy Spirit is God. Um, but as what was said in the video, there are many faces of God. And, and so, yes, Swedenborgianism has been um, compared to Hinduism. I've heard it compared to Taoism to some extent. I've seen it compared to Neoplatonic. Uh, more esoteric views of spirituality. Totally cool. I think all those are great. Uh, and how Swedenborgians interpret this theology, again, I, I don't pretend to be speaking for any other Swedenborgian except for myself. There are Swedenborgians who agree with what I'm saying in this video, but I'm not speaking for all of them. So right there, those two uh, statements made in this video are utterly incorrect. Uh you can say that you don't agree with Swedenborg's view of the Trinity. Uh, and Swedenborg is certainly a critic of the tripersonal view of the Trinity. Um, you might call him a tri-unitarian or whatever, whatever phrase you want to use. But he was very clear that the Trinity does exist, but exists as one divine person, not as three co-eternal, co-existent persons making up one being. He utterly rejects that notion. So, oh, and then the vicarious atonement. Uh, yeah, uh, he did not believe, and he did not write, that Jesus... He rejects the notion that the Son needed to pay the wages of sin, uh, and that an angry, wrathful deity needed to have the second person of the Trinity come down as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. That metaphysical claim is utterly rejected by Swedenborg, and it is replaced by a much higher metaphysical concept that which I don't even think I came and go into in this video. So, uh, yes, th that's another accurate thing. He did reject the vicarious atonement scenario. Uh, the, the, the atonement meaning that he needed to atone for our sins, be a sacrifice for our sins. But let's continue. The God of the Bible is the only true God. All other gods are idols, creations of man. Exodus 20, verses 4 and 5. The Holy Spirit is definitely declared to be God in the Bible. Uh -huh. Acts 5, verses 3 and 4. As is Jesus Christ. John 1, verse 1. Okay. And God the Father. Philippians 1, verse 2. Okay. The Trinity is a valid biblical reality. The Trinity is a valid biblical reality. Yeah, I, I don't even know if I can go into details about this. I mean, so far, on the surface, there's not a lot of contradiction. But I will point out, because this does carry on for the, for the rest of the short video, that they're quoting Paul. And, and, and granted, this is expected, um, that a, a, a literalist Protestant or non-denominational Christian will be quoting Paul for the vast majority of their references. Um, and it should be noted that Swedenborg rejected Paul's writings, the epistles, Acts of the Apostles, as not being uh, in his view of the canon. So Swedenborg came up with his own list of what makes up uh, the inspired canon, uh, he believed that what makes up the canon are works that um, have correspondences, which is a symbolic reading of the text. Uh, it wasn't that he totally disagreed or rejected Paul's writings or the other epistles, because you'll see that throughout his writings he'll quote them. But he was very clear that there were two types of scripture, or two types of writings. There was the inspired scripture, which is infused with correspondences, that has this multiple layer of interpretation and meaning. And then there are doctrinal elaborations. So there are men and women who write things that are that, that are their personal interpretation of theological or metaphysical ideas. He puts Paul in the vast majority of the New Testament into that second category. Um, and he and he actively engages with those texts. There are things in the text that he says, yeah, great, good stuff. There's a lot of stuff he disagrees with. Uh, a lot of stuff that, that Paul says in his epistles, Swedenborg takes exception to. 
Um, the only four books of the, uh, excuse me, five books of the New Testament that are in Sweden, the Swedenborgian canon are the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the Book of Revelation. So, in all honesty, for the rest of this video, they're just quoting uh, Paul and uh, other parts of the New Testament, like Acts, uh, which really is just kind of like, well, that's nice, but that does not inform Swedenborgian theology, at least not when it comes to major metaphysical ideas. Again, I understand this is probably bizarre for nominal Christians to hear, uh, but uh, moving on. The Bible is also very clear on Jesus' vicarious atonement for our sin. 1 John 2, verse 2. 1 John. And it is only through belief in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection that salvation is possible. John 14, verse 6. Mm. The afterlife will be experienced in one of two places, heaven or hell, okay. and that in a physical body. Revelation chapter 22. Hmm. Swedenborgianism and its churches by whatever name they might... Interesting. Uh, yeah, so really, that's the interesting thing about the Bible, is the Bible doesn't really give a lot of detail about what the, after, uh, what the afterlife is going to be like. And that's actually the really cool thing about Swedenborg's writings, is that he uh, wrote about his view of the afterlife. Uh, so... Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like, so you, you're going to quote one passage from Revelation. There's this huge body of literature that is talking about the details of the afterlife, which the Bible is silent about or barely gets into, barely. Um, so yeah, that's essentially the whole video. And then he goes on to finish by saying, Swedenborgianism. They've been called, are as far outside historical biblical Christianity as a group can get. Although they might claim to base their teachings on the Bible, every teaching is tainted by heresy confusion, and sometimes lunacy. Heresy, confusion, lunacy. Oh, I love it. God Questions Ministry right. seeks to... So yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I guess we are all a little crazy. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, well, to say that Swedenborgianism is outside of historical biblical Christianity, um, I actually don't have an issue with that. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, because Swedenborg, his view of what... First off, he didn't go about... To be a you know he did, he wasn't a founder of this by the way he did his writings some published some unpublished during his lifetime and died and then a bunch of people started to read his stuff and go wow this is awesome stuff and they were from you know regular Christian denominations regular Christian denominations and a lot of them were kicked out of their parent denominations because they were accepting the things that Swedenborg was saying. So, uh, but Swedenborg believed, and he talks about this in his book, Apocalypse Explained, uh, where he does take a pretty heavy hit at both uh, Roman Catholicism and, and what he calls the Reformed, or what is actually Protestantism. Uh, he interprets Revelation in its entirety as meaning the ending of ages. Uh, so Swedenborg does not believe in, did not believe in a, physical second coming of Jesus. It is a spiritual experience, something that's experienced in the spiritual realm, and we in the physical realm feel or experience this mainly from a psychological perspective. Um, and we can people can argue about whether that's just a bunch of BS or whether there's any truth to that. Um, but Swedenborg definitely is sort of at the gateway between mainline religion and what people might call new religious movements or the more kind of esoteric um, late 17, early 1800, all the way up to the present day type spiritual movements, which is a huge umbrella term and tons of variation within that, that body of spiritual groups. Um, but without a doubt, he did think that uh, Christianity, what, what this video would refer to as historical biblical Christianity, was not the last chapter in the narrative of the development of the Judeo-Christian tradition, that the Judeo-Christian tradition had a next phase, which he claimed to be the person to have witnessed the beginning of this new church um, or this new Christianity. Uh, and so, yeah, for the video to say that it's outside of biblical historical Christianity, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes, the foundations are there. And obviously, as Christianity is resting on the foundations of Judaism, 
Swedenborgian, Swedenborgianism is resting on the uh, the foundations of those foundations, Judaism and Christianity. But certainly, it uh, it, it it would be uh, not a, you know a wrong thing to say that it's outside of historic biblical Christianity. Uh, some Swedenborgians might not like to think that way. Um, I actually have no issue with it. I'm really cool with the idea of thinking that this is not uh, mainline Christian theology. Um, that's one reason why I like it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, that I think is all I really have to say about the video. Um, I know that, that that's kind of a lot, uh, sort of all over the place. Um, but if you found this video interesting, and if you want to know more about Swedenborg, um, I'd be willing to make more videos on the subject, and I probably will. Um, and of course I recommend going to Off the Left Eye, the, the YouTube channel. There's tons of intro videos and tons of content about Swedenborg. Um, but Curse Childs has certainly inspired me to, um, add my own thoughts to the ongoing YouTube Swedenborgian contributions and conversations. So hope this video was interesting. This is something that's been sort of, uh, percolating in my mind for some time now. Uh, hope you're all doing good. Peace be with you all. Love is the law. Love under will.